Hello everyone, how are you? Here on is a new weekly recap. This week happened many, many things. But uh, firstly, I wanted to say that um, it's the week 15. 15 weeks already since we started our adventure the 26th of uh, February. So, wow, I'm getting closer and closer, more than uh, 2,200 kilometers. And already I see signs of uh, Santiago, 150 kilometers and then plus 90 to arrive to Finisterre. So I'm getting really close and I have a mixed feeling about it. So emotionally it's a bit hard. But well, uh, I wanted to explain you a few things that happened to me during this week that I think that are really nice. And um, it's, it's the Camino. The, the Camino bring you nice things. The other things where you have to be strong and um, keep just keep going, keep walking, like in life. And uh, let me start, let me start, where I can start? By the way, I am behind the, um, the charge of uh, Tricastella. In a, I think that in a, in a mystic and really nice place. For example, look this wall. It's unbelievable, or this door. It's really, really authentic, really old. And I choose this place because it's quiet and uh, it's quite uh, magic, like the Camino. Let me start. What happened uh, during this last week? Remarkable. Yes, I think that happened something that I'm going to remember all my life. Um, one of the hardest uh, days in the Camino, based geographically, is the first day in Saint Jean du Port, and then uh, almost arriving to the end of the trip, there is a place that's called Osebreiro that separates the province from uh, Castilla y León to Galicia, and also you have to go up 900 meters during seven kilometers high. So it's quite challenging and it's a challenge. And uh, the day before this happened, I just arrived to a, a really special location that's called Villafranca del Bierzo. It's really, really known by the quality of the wine, the people and the good food as well, but especially because they produce excellent wine. People know about La Rioja, about the the, the special wine that is produced there, but all the northern Spain. There are different varieties of wine and every time that you are moving uh, west is getting the speciality uh, different more uh, and uh, for example now that we are almost close to uh, Galicia to the west of Spain uh, the best quality I guess that is because the earth and the ground is the white wine in the Bierzo is something is red wine and uh, I could taste really, 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 really amazing flavor. Not really strong. In a, it's a stronger in Logroño, for example, or in Burgos. Here, in that area, was amazing. But this is not what I wanted to explain you <laughs> about wine. But it's just uh, knowledge. You have to know that if you go to the Bierzo, you have to taste the, 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 the wine over there. But you, if you don't like it, just taste it. Because for an euro and a half that cost the cup of uh, really good wine, is unbelievable. It's unbelievable, something unique. But uh, the magic thing, the unique thing that happened to me is that there is an albergue in uh, Villa Franca del Bierzo that's called Ape Phoenix. And uh, I am not sure if I explain you or, or, or I need that uh, you're gonna go by yourself to feel it because it's a magic place. You have different kind of albergues. Uh, each albergue is providing you different services, right? Sometimes these people that need more luxury, that need uh, more, uh, better accommodation, better beds, the menu have to be excellent, etc., etc. But few times you arrive to places that are totally unexpected and have a kind of aura. It's, are places where you don't know why, but you connect really deeply. And this is what happened to me in uh, Ave Phoenix. And at least with the people that I met over there, we created a really nice connection and was unbelievable. Was unbelievable. I met a couple of uh, people that are managing the, the albergue of Phoenix, um, Manel and uh, Jaco, that are the owner and uh, the, the guy that is helping in the reception. And 
they show you, they perhaps they don't realize because they are becoming older and older. We're talking that the one of both is 84 years old and the other is around 65. So are senior people with a lot of knowledge and they were leaders in the way how they approach life. So when you are close to them, you can feel happiness, freedom, another way of thinking, another way of treating life. And it's magic, it's unbelievable. I could stay hours describing you, giving you examples, but it's something that if you have the chance and if you do the Camino Frances, for sure, for sure, for sure, you're gonna leave that place in a different way. And you're gonna feel, uh, yeah, maybe you will not like it, but uh, you're gonna remember that place because you will not like it. You know what I mean? So, or you will love it in a level that you didn't expect because the people, because the place, the environment, everything that flows there, the way how they organize the work, the dinner, everything. Everything is made by themselves. And uh, they have a nice story that is the uh, Ave Phoenix and why it's called Alberg in the Camino Santiago Ave, Ave Phoenix. And this is because that place, uh, between 40 and 50 years ago, they started with uh, small camps. Yes, so it was not high quality um, roofs that now is wood. The material is wood before was really, really low level, low profile place to sleep. The philosophy that they are saying is that it's not an albergue to get money, to do business. It's an albergue to take care of pilgrims. And then they have to charge 10 euros or something like this just to keep going, not to get money at all. So the philosophy already when you arrive there, they will come you with a smile. You see a guy. And the first thing that they are telling you when you're exhausted after 25 kilometers is, please sit, relax. Do you want a coffee? And from these sentences to do the check-in, maybe there is eight minutes difference where you are alone saying, what's going on here? I don't understand anything. And that already shock to me, a shock to many people, because sometimes the pilgrims were really exhausted and we won now, 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 you know, that feeling of, of uh, I want to have a shower and get ready for the day after already where I gonna, where is the supermarket to buy things in there. First, they welcome you with a coffee. That is the first time in 15 weeks that someone welcomed me with a deposit to have a free coffee or, or a tea. And the second thing is, please rest and relax. Unbelievable. This is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. And then there is unlimited stories that I could explain you. If you want, we can do another edition just to talk about this, because if not, uh, I could stay um, hours and hours talking about how magic is that place. This is the first thing that I wanted to explain you. How nice was my, my uh, day in Ave Phoenix. The second thing that happened is that during the day after that we went to Ocebreiro, that is really hard, in the middle of the way, <laughs> this is the second funny thing. Um, and I was quite uh, agile and I, I went up quite qu uh, quick, I would say. I, I enjoyed I enjoyed a lot of the, of the going up to Ocebreiro. And in a moment I turned and I saw many cows that were coming to the way where I was crossing, going up, and they, the, the cows, they were going down to get, I don't know, uh, new grass in a specific uh, place. It's something that they do sometimes, no? That uh, at nine in the morning, so the, the guy that take care of the cows, they open, and the, the cows, they know already where they have to go. The thing that I didn't expect it, and uh, there are cows that I am meter 80 high, and they are like me, or bigger, bigger for sure. And uh, well, it's unbelievable. Uh, beautiful creatures, uh, believe me, really uh, beautiful. I, um, I'm really happy because I could film it, and in my GoPro in the coming days, gonna, gonna appear in the spe special edition of this Ascension too because I filmed everything, the last seven kilometers I could film everything and it's unbelievable. The views, 
the feelings and the emotion. And in, in a moment, in that in that specific moment, I didn't expect and I cross 20, 30 huge, beautiful cows in front of me. And I was here with my GoPro and they were passing one meter, one meter and a half. I, I give all the, the road to them to pass and I stay really close to the to the wall to let them pass and I did not anything to offend them, to stress them. The thing that happened is that uh, <laughs> the guy that was taking care of the cows saw that I had here a camera and when, uh, I, th I think that he thought that I was not a Spaniard so that I could not understand anything. I was a typical guy that is always alone and is all the time with a bad mood, the face is really serious, like this, with a stick here in the in the in the in in, in his mouth. And he passed next to me and he says something like mm, the the cows, you are stressing the cows. All of you are stressing my cows. But in Spanish, and of course I understood everything. He did a, a free comment. In front of me, I say Buen Camino to him, good morning, have a good day. And he answered me saying that, that uh, all of you are stressing my cows. And I look at him saying, what are you talking about? And uh, he, st he started arguing with me, but without stopping, shouting. All of you are the same. Um, the, the cows, they don't deserve that uh, people like you stress them. Uh, and I was shocked. Everything is film. I'm happy because everything is film. Uh, and I tried to tell him, look, that I think that the only one that here is stressed is you. I didn't do anything to offend you or to offend the cows at all. I am just, I give you all the root and I wish you a, a happy, a happy day. I did nothing else. I, I cannot disappear of, of the universe because your cow have to pass in the same road as me. Wow. Attention of, I don't know. To me, it was longer, but perhaps 20 seconds arguing at the same time that he was leaving the road with the cows, it's telling me terrible things. And at the end, uh, I told him, I, I wish you a really good day. And I hope that this afternoon it rains a lot because I'm then going to refresh your mind a bit because it, it is not normal. What, what are you doing right now? My God, so funny, so funny. Wow, things of the Camino. To me, this is not a bad thing. It's just things that happen in the Camino. But well, then I arrived to the top of Ebreiro, that is 1,300 meters high. And they welcome all the pilgrims because you, you change is what I told you, the province. We started uh, Galicia in, the, in there and a part of that, uh, they are really taking care of that specific village, all the restaurants and everything is really beautiful. I am a guy that's called Gaitero, is the, like the Celtics. The, uh, the Celtics is not the NBA team. The Celtics as well is a is a kind of uh, people that is uh, playing uh, a specific. Um, I don't know how to say it. Um, in English, I would say that is. You have to search it. Put Galicia, and put Gaiteros, Gaiteros, and you will see, because it's a bit hard to explain what kind of. Uh, the instrument they are playing, right? But it's beautiful. They welcome the pilgrims with a guy that originally is the, the, the music that was uh, played in this area of Galicia. And they welcome you with, a, with horses. Like the last uh, 70 meters is like a, a, a dark forest, really mystic, really beautiful unbelievable with some horses i don't know if they may make it in purpose or not but it was really beautiful is they transport you in the 14th century because what probably was like this and um, with the sound of the gaitas the gaitero that was playing i was shocked i i was transported to another dimension i was amazed what what a welcome i i got on the top of the of the of osebreiro per free and uh, was was beautiful, was really beautiful, touch me. Yeah, after 28 kilometers, you're exhausted. Last, last seven kilometers is really difficult journey and that they welcome you like this was unique. Believe, and believe me, was unique. Ay, many things happen. What else, what else? Well, in the Camino, something that also that is 
I think that, that already mentioned, but uh, that is a bit hard, is that um, you meet a lot of people, you, ha you are talking with many people, I had the chance with my GoPro to meet pilgrims and they explain me their story briefly, and then in the afternoon sometimes I'm, I'm having a beer with all these people, and you know visually the Koreans, the, the people from Australia, from people from UK, the Americans, you know who is each other, perhaps you don't know the names, but you know each other, and you create a kind of community, no? The people that is walking the same that you until uh, Finisterre or until uh, Santiago. And uh, me, because I am not used doing the Camino de Santiago, uh, I come farther. I started in the Netherlands almost four months ago. Every four or five days I stop. It means that I stop seeing these people and probably I will not see them again. And this is something that happened me many times. But now that it's becoming the ending, it's becoming harder and harder. Yes, because the connection, the happiness of the people, because we start to arrive, we can smell the environment of uh, people that is exhausted, that is emotional, etc., etc. We're mixing stories. It's becoming special, special and harder. So many times I'm telling you that uh, the Camino magnifies everything and you become more sensitive for everything and even people that in a normal day in your life you would not talk with that person because you don't have much in common the Camino brings you together and uh, bring situations create situations that uh, you cannot understand you, you can stay in a table in the seven in the evening with two Koreans two French people two Italians two Germans two Spaniards and perhaps there is guys of 25 years old the others of 80 years old, people that doesn't speak the, the other language or even English, and we understand each other. <laughs> and it's unbelievable. So here is not about religion, it's not about money, it's not about age, it's not about experience, it's not about egos, it's just to have the common goal, and, and it is the reason why I recommend everyone to come to, to the Camino, to just remove your, as many times I say, I, I try to explain, it's trying to grow up personally, trying to remove your mask of your daily, uh, that, that you create as, as, a, as a person in your daily basis and become just part of the Camino and enjoy the Camino. And this is, is, is beautiful. Uh, in my opinion, this is beautiful. And that's all. I could stay, I have the feeling that I could stay a couple of hours uh, explain you more details about everything happen, uh, many things, um, but we want to have time still. Um, I think that for this week it's enough. I try to explain you a few things that touch me, really touch me. And now we enter in Galicia, and in Galicia there is also good food. Um, many people, because there is many people that gonna start the Caminos uh, de Santiago here in Galicia. And uh, more adventure is coming. So keep, uh, if you want following me, I am really happy to to be able to to share these experiences to the community. And uh, nothing else. I wish you the best. And I wish you that one day you're going to be um, seated in a place like this. Yes. In Tria Castella, behind the church. Just he alone, seeing the mountains and enjoying life in a different way. I wish you the best. Take care.